Hi everybody, uh, welcome back to our special segment. One video a day for an entire week. And we are rolling along with these. So we're really excited today to share with you our video about the equipment we have aboard, how they helped us along, but also how they failed. Yes. <laughs> and the number one thing that I'm sure you guys want to hear about because it really sets us apart is the electric motor. Now, we're going to have an entire separate video all about the electric motor and regen and everything, but we do want to focus just a tiny bit on it today because it does have a pretty big part to play in our crossing. Yeah, so most people, when the wind dies, they just crank on their diesel and keep going. When the wind dies for us, we put up our light air sails and have a snack. <laughs> Quite so, literally. <laughs> yeah. Play some cards. So the electric motor actually worked really well on the trip. And mm -hmm. the kind of the big failure that we had was all our solar panels. Yeah. So they all corroded away and died. <laughs> so we we originally had 300 watts of solar power. Which really isn't very much. No, it's tiny to start with. Mm -hmm. But we lost all but one. So we had 50 watts of solar. Yes, we had that was um, an issue. very little power coming from solar. Therefore, our regen really stepped it up. Yeah, the regen actually powered the entire boat the whole way across the ocean. And the way that works is as long as we're going four knots minimum, the propeller is spinning and we are gaining power from that hydro regen. Yeah, so as the propeller spins, it then turns the motor and the motor, instead of acting as a draw, it acts as an alternator and puts power back into the battery banks. So when you're, we're doing like four to five knots, we're gaining about two amps at 48 volts. Now everything for the house side, which is 12 volt, you multiply by four because that's how electricity works. <laughs> uh, so at slow speeds, we're getting about two amps. When we're doing six to seven knots, we're getting six amps, which is 24 amps at 24 volt. There were times when we were doing eight and nine knots and there we were getting like 12 amps. It was insane. It was very critical in keeping our batteries going throughout the trip since the solar panels died so easily and the way they died was corrosion. Yeah, it's salt environment. It's yeah. going to happen. But we were able to run the fridge, the radio, uh, all our cell phones. Well, we weren't using them as we phones, were. <laughs> but we were, we're using, using them, them as navigation. navigation. Yeah. So um, we were able to charge those up as well as the uh, sat phone, which yeah. is really important. So at no point were the batteries low and we were thinking, oh, geez, I have to charge this, but don't have any power. However, if we did need to supplement our power, we had our generator. Which we never used. <laughs> so. so that's great. It is a Honda 2000 generator, so it doesn't take up very much space. Um, we did have to carry a little bit of gas for it. Mm -hmm. and we never used it. Yeah. So we never used it from Bermuda to the Azores. When mm -hmm. we we're heading from the Bahamas to Bermuda, we did use it because we we're in the doldrums. Yes. And we we're trying to like motor just a little to like get somewhere so then when we got to bermuda we had used about five gallons of gas the whole way mm -hmm. and then we decided we need to have more gas because we're gonna be crossing the ocean so we got an extra five gallon jug and carried 15 gallons of gas and then we didn't use any and we didn't yeah <laughs> um but it was really nice to know that we had that as a backup just in case yeah uh, that being said, that's what the motor is for us. It's a backup. Uh, we we are not relying on it. It's yeah. not a replacement of a diesel. No, the motor for us is the thing that makes it easier to get into anchorages and yes. into marinas. Yes. And it was going to be a fun challenge for us because not many people sailed the Atlantic in recent times without a diesel motor. Yeah. Um, so it set us apart and it made us all the more proud when we actually reached our destination. Yeah. As far as other equipment we have on the boat that really came in handy during yes. our crossing, we used every single day, every, every hour of every day. Yes. Wendy, our monitor wind vane. Fantastic. Yeah. Cannot oh, emphasize man. how awesome that thing was. Yeah. I mean, oh, she took us all the way across the Atlantic. All we had to do was understand how she worked and set her appropriately. Yep. Um, if we need to change course, we didn't grab the helm and steer and like reset the autopilot. We just go up and adjust Wendy. Yeah. Uh, so monitor wind vanes, fantastic. The great thing about them is they take no electricity to run. So since we were kind of hurting for electricity, it was great. We didn't have to worry about that. 
and it's all wind based so if the wind changes direction then you have to adjust her but otherwise you don't even have to touch the wheel well, you have to adjust her if you don't like your new course a couple times the wind right. would shift a little <laughs> bit and we're still relatively on course that's so true we just yes left it alone <laughs> and actually like when we left bermuda we didn't touch a thing for four days mm -hmm. and that was pretty much standard for us we yeah. set the sails set wendy and relaxed <laughs> yeah it was wonderful yeah. um so we highly recommend a monitor wind vane uh in lieu of any kind of electric uh autopilot, autopilot system we did have an autopilot yeah. at one point but it used up so much energy and it was loud yeah and it would overcorrect, and it, it was, was just was a for us a monitor wind vane was just perfect that was probably the most important piece of equipment we had on the boat for the crossing because we yeah. used it and constantly if, if you think about it without it we'd have to hand steer yeah <laughs> That's... Woof. Now, it made watches so that we <coughs> literally just sit and make watch. sure we continue <laughs> in the same direction yeah you weren't steering or sailing you were just watching <laughs> yeah <laughs> now as far as failures the control lines to the modern wind vane actually got some chafe in them mm -hmm. so i did have to service and like repair that but they were also two years old, mm -hmm. so... Yeah, it was expected, and yeah. it wasn't a really big deal. The monitor and Cape Horn are very similar. The big difference is that the Cape Horn, all the ropes are internal, so you don't get to see them. Where the monitor, all the ropes are external. So I actually was, you know, you just sit around the cockpit and you notice that rope is chafing. So you yeah. fix it. It's not all of a sudden it breaks and then you have to look around like, what's wrong? And then you find your chafed and severed line. The other major piece of equipment that definitely sets us apart from other people and was a wonderful test was the synthetic rigging. Yeah. Um, nobody else has done it with the synthetic rigging and electric motor. <laughs> yeah. When we started this, a lot of people were telling us that it wouldn't work and on and on. Even Lynn uh, Party. Yeah, that was... <laughs> yeah, we met Lynn Party at a boat show. <laughs> And she was like, oh, you're going cruising. That's so good. And on and on. And then we mentioned we, the synthetic, synthetic rigging, rigging. And she just like stopped. She's like, oh, no, do not do that. She said that will and never work. <laughs> yeah, it was, like, it was oh. so sad because we yeah. love the parties. But um, yeah, like they're engineless. Yeah. Like, but she really shot that down. <laughs> yeah. But it worked. Uh, it worked. As far as chafe, we didn't have any issues with chafe on the rigging. Nope. Uh, I mean, we're, we haven't adjusted the rigging in a long time. And we're currently in the Azores, and we still haven't needed to adjust it, so it's doing very well. I mean, we ran into zero problems with yeah. the rigging. Zero. Um, we were never worried about any kind of corrosion yeah, or, or well, hairline hold. scratches or anything like that, uh, because it's all there to see. The really, We've talked about this before, but the only problem with synthetic rigging is chafe, and it's so easy to spot. Mm -hmm. that uh, we were never worried that something was happening that we didn't know about. Yep. Um, and it wasn't shaving, so it was fine. And we plan on sailing continually more, yeah, yeah, with the same setup. Uh, another thing that, it's not that it failed, but it's just it wore out, was the packing gland to the rudder post. That was, I've never seen that. And, and that's something that can be really scary if you don't realize it in time. Yeah, because you just see water coming in around the rudder post. It's like, oh my god, what's happening? But if you know how packing glands work, it's like, oh, it's loose. But the thing is, the packing gland on the rudder post is actually original. <laughs> the boat's from 1968. Yeah, so it's really, really old and has never needed replacing. Because, and you figure, the rudder post, it does this a little bit, once in a while. But when we were sailing across the ocean, it was two months of that constant. And it just now needs replacing. Yeah. Um, but we were able to fix that uh, yeah I, like on the go as, yeah while as we're, we're out going, there yeah. we just tightened it yeah. and then now i'm gonna replace it because we're out of the water so mm -hmm. it's easy to fix the nav lights the wires to them yeah. corroded mm -hmm. uh they're led and then one night they just weren't working and thankfully it was separate nights so one night the stern light didn't work and the next night the bow light didn't work but it was a simple matter of just resplice and yeah. fix. It was fine. Other failures. Oh, a uh, big failure we had was the Durad vents. Mm -hmm. All right, this is dumb, but we had the Durads aimed forward even in heavy weather because <laughs> it let in a lot of fresh air, and that was really nice. And then when a 
big breaking wave would come over the boat, it let in a whole lot of seawater. Yeah, there was one time I went down and I just saw a waterfall like yeah. coming down through that uh, Duradvent yeah, hole. So, so, oh, that was terrible. Yeah, so all it is is just turn the cowl so it faces away from the weather. Yeah. That's all it takes, but we learned that one. Uh, another <laughs> failure we had was the uh, the hoss pipe to the anchor locker. Oh, yeah. Uh, water was just pouring in where the chain goes to the deck. So what we ended up doing is we actually took the anchor off, took the chain off, and then put those, like, big orange, like, cones that they sell at West Marine and just shoved that through there. And that stopped all the water from coming through. Yeah, thankfully. <laughs> yeah, so, like... Things would happen, and then we'd fix them, and then yeah. we're good, and we kept going. One reason we didn't have much fail in equipment is we don't have much. Uh, we don't That's have radar. That's very true. We don't have uh, computers or... Like, we never had an issue of our computer not being able to connect and get internet and stuff, because we don't have yeah. that. One major piece of equipment uh, that we really... Like, it is the thing that we keep the most safe uh, is our satellite phone. And that's because that is our one communication we have with anybody. <laughs> yeah. So friends, family, patrons, they can all see where we are mm -hmm. on a map in real time because it's transmitting a signal every 10 minutes. We had a system uh, set up where we would text our family members every morning and every night yeah, that, that we they, were alive. They knew we were okay. Yeah. <laughs> and they were able to follow us on a map, which was really important um, to them and to us so that... We felt like there was someone watching, so if something happened, they would know kind of where we were, and also they had the kind of... Peace of mind peace to see of we're mind. still going. Exactly. Yeah. And it also allowed us to communicate with our patrons, uh, which was really cool, and yeah. we plan to use that again in the future. Yeah, because we're out at sea. I mean, we talked a lot, but it's <laughs> nice to talk to someone new. Yes, so exactly. So people would just message us on the sat phone, and we'd yeah. have a conversation. 160 characters at a time. <laughs> it was nice. So we really took great effort to keep that safe. Yeah. And luckily that never failed us. So that was all the equipment that we used on our crossing. Uh, like Herbie said, it's not much. Um, but we're kind of minimalists, as you know. And it felt really good to make the crossing with the little bit of equipment that we had. We replaced lack of equipment with knowledge. Yeah. Um, so which instead is great. of... Instead of having, you know, fancy chart plotters that can go out and all those things, we had paper charts and a sextant. A sextant. Yeah. Uh, we had Navionics on our iPads, mm -hmm. but just in case that went out, that was what we used to correct to verify that my uh, sighting was correct. Exactly. Um, so. I mean, I we're firm believers that if you're going to do it, if you're going to cross an ocean, uh, you have to re be prepared for everything to go wrong. Mm -hmm. And that includes failure of every single piece of equipment you have. So you should have backup systems in place for everything. And know how to fix it yourself. Exactly. Um, so that worked out really well for us. I think that every single person has a story of equipment failure. <laughs> yeah. Please let us know um, what they We would are. love to hear your stories about what you use in your boat. I'm things sure that work, things that break. Yeah. I'm sure that, that you break. all have totally different stories because everybody's sailing style is different. Everybody uses different equipment and relies on different equipment. So we'd love to hear what you use most frequently for us. It's our monitor wind vane. What do you use? Um, let us know in the comments and we'll definitely respond to you and uh, make it a conversation. So thanks so much for watching. Tomorrow's video is our final video and that is going to just be all about our personal feelings about the trip, just summarizing everything and talking about what we learned and what we're going to do differently next time. Um, mistakes we made and everything everything we're just yep. gonna sum up everything so <laughs> we're super excited for tomorrow's video and we're excited to see you all again and hear from you yeah so be sure to subscribe that way you get no uh, notifications as soon as the next video is up yeah all right see you guys tomorrow bye <laughs>